everybody and welcome to your August inspirational video for our community online spinning group. I hope you've all had a fantastic July and thank you all so much for all of your input in that month. It was such good fun. But here we are in August already and ready to start another little, I was going to say challenge, but it's not a challenge, it's just an inspiration. So we're going to be looking this month at semi worsted yarns. Now you've all heard me talking about my very favourite woolen spin and worsted spin, um, but sometimes we don't want to produce anything quite so specific. Let me just recap for you the differences. So a woolen spin comes from a woolen preparation, which means you have a shorter fibre, which has been carded, into Rolex and spun long draw. The purpose of that being that you do not exclude the air, so you're not touching it as much as you're actually when you're actually spinning it. And that produced is this gorgeous, lofty sort of cozy, comforting sort of yarn. Okay. The other end of the scale is the true worsted, which comes from a longer fibre, and you can already see that's just much straighter, it's more robust. So we use a long fibre that has been combed, not carded, but combed, to align all of the fibres. And we would spin that in a short draw, forward or back, excuse me, got an itch. And that helps us to smooth all of the fibres by excluding all of the air and makes it more compact, more robust, and more resilient. So this one would be more prone to pilling, for example, whereas this one wouldn't be as much. Okay, so that's the differences. But there are times when, you know, as I said, you don't necessarily want to create those specific yarns, or you just want to have a play with a different technique, and maybe you don't want just the same as you've always been doing. That's particularly relevant if you generally spin with um, commercially prepared top like this. So these are fibres that have all been carded, but they're then combed to align them so they're all running in the same direction. So that's top, okay? Now you can, we normally spin this one for our worsted preparation, short forward draw probably, to make that nice smooth yarn. The difference is with a semi worsted, we start with a worsted preparation, so which are your longer fibres which are aligned straight, but we allow the twist into our drafting zone. Now, any of you that have been to me for a spinning lesson will know that I always say when learning to spin, I truly believe that if you can control the twist, you can then create anything. And I generally teach you to spin with a short forward draw, keeping your fingers closed around the yarn so that you don't allow the twist into your fluffy fibres, because we all know at the beginning it gets very messy and knotted up sometimes, doesn't it? So the general rule for a worsted is that we do not allow the twist into our fibre supply. With a semi worsted, we do. So we have a worsted preparation, but we are going to allow the twist into the fibre supply as we would if we were spinning a woolen yarn. Okay, let me show you that. I'll have to just move my camera down so you won't see me, you'll just see my spinning hopefully. That all goes to plan. Okay, so there's my wheel. Right, let me just get started and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so, that joined on. I do hope you cannot hear the rain. This is the only day I've got actually to, <laughs> to record this. We haven't had any rain, but yonks and yonks. And now today we've got a thunderstorm. So, as we would normally spin, I hope you can see here where I'm holding my fibre supply gently and my thumb and my first finger stay on the yarn all the time when I'm spinning a proper worsted. So the twist is building up here 
but is not allowed oops, in my fibre supply. It's like the gateway, isn't it? He's just stopping that twist, keeping it where I want it. And that will produce a nice smooth yarn. So if I just pull this back and show you, a little pie back test here. Let's have a look at this. Oops. So that has made a nice firm yarn. You can see that there. Okay. Now, if we start again, but this time, rather than just running my fingers back, I'm going to just let go. Ooh, it feels very peculiar. <laughs> so as you can see, as I pull it forward, I deliberately let go. So that twist is jumping back into my fibre supply. I hope you can see that just here as I pull it back and it pings back, doesn't it? And it's just helping to gather up the next few fibres along the way. So this will allow us to keep a little bit more air in our fibre supply and therefore in our yarn. And it will hopefully create a yarn that is a little bit more rounded, a bit more airy, with a little bit more elasticity. So let's have a little look at that, shall we? Let's pull that back and do another little fibre back test. Yeah, and already, can you see how that is looking more rounded here, much more fluffy looking, more open, much softer, looking more like a woolen might look, but not quite. So it's giving you just a different look, but with again, with a very simple preparation. Okay, now let me just put this back up to me so you can see me again. So when we're using commercial top, another way of producing a semi-worsted would be from spinning from the fold. To do this, if you just take a piece off, a little length like this, and just pop it over your, your first finger, and we spin, you can see that there, right from the tip. It's almost like you're pointing towards the orifice. And I'm touching it again, aren't I? <laughs> okay, and again, just forward, 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 letting go so that that twist can travel up here. And I hope you can see there, you can see Ted wandering around. <laughs> I hope you can see there where the twist is entering the fibre supply, making that little V shape. This is actually a good method to use if you're spinning um, a gradient top. It's got lots of different colours in it because it actually helps you to pick up the colours in the order that they would be across the fibre preparation, if that makes sense. So rather than getting all the colours muddled up, it actually just helps them to maintain their colour structure, which obviously somebody's put in <laughs> a great to great lengths to do. So you can see here, nice and simple, straight off the tip. Again, letting go, allowing that twist into your fibre supply. Okay, let's have a quick look at that one then. There's a little ply back. Oops, where can you see this from? And again, it's still nice and rounded. I'm not sure that there's much difference in any of them, actually. I'll, I'll put a little, I'll do a test of all of these and I'll put it at the end of the video so you can actually have a look at it and see the differences that we've created. We'll give you something nice to compare yours to as well. Okay, so I hope you can see that there. So again, just another way of using your commercially prepared top. Okay. Okay, so the other thing that you might like to consider is if you are preparing a fleece. So if you have washed your lovely fleeces, particularly this time of the year, it's ideal, isn't it? 
and you want to try something different or perhaps like with this fleece that I've got actually it's this particular portion is quite short but it's actually quite inconsistent in its consistency it's got shorter bits longer bits some of those that are just on the cusp of lengthwise I'm not quite sure what to do with it so I'll be experimenting with it and having a go so what you might normally do is hand card so I've got some ready here and again let me just turn this camera down again so you can see where I've got to the stage of my carding I've carded it and it's sitting lightly on my carders because obviously when we card the purpose of carding is that it misaligns those fibres but like this they're pretty much straight but rather than rolling it in a sausage shape to make a row lag like we normally would, we're going to roll this one sideways so that the fibres are still in their straight line. So these fibres are still in the same direction as they were on the, um, in, whether it's in its staple format. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can spin that one. So although it's sort of woolen prepared, because we've folded it in the opposite or rolled it in the, keeping the fibres parallel, it is still more worsted like. Okay, so let me just get this one going again as well. Oh gosh, and it feels very, very different to, uh, to, the, to the commercially prepared top. So obviously I've washed this, it still feels very sheepy and very woolly, it's lovely. Okay, oh, this is maybe not the time to worry about little lumps and bumps. Let's just get this technique going, shall we? So, just by pulling it out from the end and just letting go, just as we did just now, it still allows the twist into your fibre supply, which is still nice and straight. You can still see here where it's joining those fibres all together, so they're all being pulled out together. And let's have a little look at that. So again, allowing that twist in, let's do a little flyback test on this one. Oh, nice, there we go, I hope you can see that. Again, that is looking really, oops, not very consistent obviously <laughs> but you can see it's actually still quite a bit more rounded can you see that certainly up here it's it's much more soft okay the other thing you might like to do if you like to drum card oops, hello again <laughs> so if you have created a bat like this you can make your own roving just by tearing off strips. So again, thinking about the way that this has been prepared, it's basically, whoops, no, drop that bit. <laughs> it's basically the staples have been put through the drum carder in this direction. So they are maintaining their original orientation. Okay, so by tearing a strip off, it's still a long preparation of those fibres all in the same direction. And again, all we need to do is spin from our roving. And I'll tell you, so <laughs> I'm sitting here doing this and I'm trying very hard not to do this, not to slide my fingers across it, or even not to long draw because this just feels like it actually wants to. It really does, just wants to do that. But we're not doing that today, are we? We are doing semi worsted. So, let me get this going, it's a bit thick, right? Okay, so forward, let go, forward, forward, forward. And I'm doing this in a very deliberate way so that you can really see that I'm letting go and allowing that twist to travel back into my fibre supply. But because I'm just pulling out of the end of my roving, those fibres are still remaining as straight as possible for a worsted style preparation. And I don't think I moved my camera, you couldn't see that, could you? Okay, down again. Okay, so there we go. Right. 
forward, 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 forward. Okay. As simple as that. So I think it's actually quite nice that you can create a different feel to a yarn just by doing a very slight variation of the way that you may normally spin, particularly if you're new to spinning or you haven't really experimented with any different styles. Let's have a little look at this, a little pie back test here. Yep, and again, that's looking, you see, really quite, that's quite rounded, quite quite soft looking again. It's lovely. I actually really like that. But what I will do, actually, I'll just do a quick comparison for you to finish, just to show you how that would look if I kept my fingers on it in a proper worsted. I smoothing all these fibres together. You can see the difference here where my fingers are definitely blocking that twist. And here comes the rain again. And our little fly back test. And you can see straight away it's much tighter. It's much firmer looking, but for this particular fibre still quite nice and squishy actually, quite like it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so back to you. I hope that's given you some little ideas there to play around with this month. So as I say, whether you actually have a fleece that you want to prepare and try preparing that in these two different ways I just suggested for you, or if you're just happy to work with the, the prepared top, or have a go with both and see what you come up with. And it might be nice actually if you keep a little record of it all as well and you can show me all your results, um, show me your little plyback samples and let's see what you produce this month. Okay, good luck everybody and have fun with it. Bye for now.